In this video, I will show you how to configure an IPsec VPN or site-to-site -site VPN tunnel on a 40 gate firewall. We will do a very basic configuration, and I will show you step by step. Let's begin, this would be our network topology. We have here two different networks or two different sites. The left is the Igoro Tech site network and the right is the Taraki site network. For us to allow communication between networks, for Igoro Tech users to access the Taraki network and also Taraki users to access the Igoro Tech network, we need to configure the IPsec VPN tunnel or some call it site to site VPN. The Igoro Tech network has the public IP address of 1.200.100.100 with a LAN network of 10.1.1.0 with a slash 24 subnet mask. The Taraki network has the public IP address of 172.1.1.1 with a LAN network of 192.168.1.0 with a slash 24 subnet mask. Let's check the devices. I am accessing both devices using the public IP addresses. Igorotech is using Fortigate 60F running firmware version 7.6.0 which is the latest firmware during the time of this recording. Taraki Network is using Fortigate 60E with a firmware version of 7.4.5. We will be using different firmware versions for you to understand better because there are some changes on old and new firmware. Let's check the IP addresses. Let's go to Network. Interfaces. For Igorotech. You can see here the public IP address which is 1.200.100.100, and the LAN network gateway which is 10.1.1.1. For Taraki, you can see the public IP address which is 172.1.1.1, and the LAN network gateway which is 192.168.1.1. Let's now proceed with the IPsec VPN configuration. We will first configure the Igorotech site. If we go to VPN tab and then go to VPN tunnels, notice that there is no VPN configured yet. Let's check the Taraki network. Let's go to VPN, you can see the name is different, it's IPsec tunnels. This site has no VPN configured as well. Let's go back to Igoro Tech site. Under VPN tunnels, we will configure a new VPN tunnel. Tick create new. We can use the template but for this demo, we will use custom IPsec tunnel. Let's give the VPN name. Since this VPN is for Taraki network then we can give a name of to Taraki for our reference. Comments is optional. Next is the network settings. We have the option to choose IP version 4 and IP version 6. We will use IP version 4 since we are using IP version 4 for both network. Next is the remote gateway. By default it's set to static IP address. Dial-up user is like the hub to spoke, you can check my other video tutorial for it. Another option we have here is the dynamic DNS, this is if you want to use the remote site dynamic domain name system or DDNS instead of the public IP address. If the remote site is using dynamic public IP address and if the IP address automatically changed or renewed then the VPN will go down because the public IP address changed to different one. Dynamic DNS is very useful if you have a dynamic public IP address. You can check my other video on how to configure dynamic DNS on the FortiGate firewall. For this site, we will use a static IP address. For the Taraki site, we will use dynamic DNS. Now, we will input the public IP address of the remote site which is the Taraki network. On the interface, if you have multiple WAN links, Choose the WAN or internet facing interface you want to use for the IPsec VPN tunnel. In my case, it's the WAN 1 or ISP 1. You can see my WAN 1 public IP address, we will use this IP address to configure the Taraki IPsec VPN later. For the NAT traversal, we have two options, enable and disable. Choose enable if you manually assign the IP address on this interface or the PPPoE has been configured on the ISP router. Disable the NAT traversal if you configured the PPPoE on this firewall. Since I manually set the IP address then I will choose enable. Leave the rest to default. Again, this is the very basic IPsec VPN configuration. Next is the authentication. 
we have two methods of authentication which is pre-shared key and signature. Choose signature if you have a valid certificate server. For this demo, we will use pre-shared key which is commonly used. Pre-shared key is like a password. We will enter the pre-shared key, make sure to use a strong one. At least 16 characters, a combination of lower and upper case, numbers, and some special characters. You can press the eye icon to verify your pre-shared key. Below is the IKE or Internet Key Exchange version. We have version 1 and version 2. Version 1 is the older version while version 2 is the latest and is considered to be more secure, reliable, and faster. I personally recommend using version 2. Next is the phase 1 proposal. We have the encryption and authentication. By default, we have multiple lines added, the more lines the more secured but for this demo, we will use one line only so we will remove the other lines. In most cases, one line should be enough, but it depends on your preference or customer's requirements. The first tab is the encryption, the higher the better security. For this demo we will use AES-256. The same goes with the authentication, the higher the better, we will use SHA-256. We can use any settings since this is a new configuration. You can tick the plus sign if you prefer to add more lines. We also need to choose the Diffie-Hellman group or DH group. The same goes with the encryption and authentication. The higher group the more secure. For better security, you can choose multiple groups if you prefer. For this demo, we will use only one, we will choose group 15. For the key lifetime, again, since this is a new configuration then we can decide what to use, we can use this default if we want. We can also leave the local ID empty. I created a different VPN tunnel video and configured key lifetime and local ID, you can check my other video tutorial for it. Let's review the phase 1 proposal settings. Our encryption is AES-256. Authentication is SHA-256. DH group of 15, and a key lifetime of 86,400. We will now proceed with the Phase 2 proposal. You can see that we don't have any Phase 2 configuration. Let's create a new one. Tick Create New. Again, put a VPN name, this is very important for you to identify the connection. Since this VPN is for Taraki connection then we will name it to Taraki for our reference, it's best practice to use a name that you understand for troubleshooting purposes. Next is the encapsulation. It is highly recommended to use tunnel mode for better security. We will also leave it to IP version 4 since we are all using IP version 4 IP addresses for both networks. You can enable the named address then choose the network address if you want to use the addresses instead of subnet. For this site, we will use the subnet so we will disable these named addresses. I will show you how to use the address on the other site which is the Taraki firewall. First is the local address. We can use IP address, subnet address, or IP range. In most cases we will use the subnet address. This is the local LAN subnet of this firewall. We can go back to interfaces to view the IP settings. We can see here the LAN IP net mask which is 10.1.1.1 with slash 24 subnet mask. We will enter the network address which is 10.1.1.0 followed by the subnet mask which is slash 24. The remote address is the local LAN subnet of the remote site which is Taraki. We can go to the network interfaces also to check the IP settings. You can see here the IP net mask is 192.168.1.1 with slash 24 subnet mask. We will add the subnet address which is 192.168.1.0 with slash 24 subnet mask. There's an error, invalid IPv4 address, it's because there's a space at the beginning. Next is the encryption and authentication. We can use different settings from the phase 1 proposal and we can use multiple lines also if we want. For this demo, we want to make it simple so we will use the same setting with the phase 1 proposal. But again, you can use the settings based on your preference. We will use again the encryption of AES-256 and authentication of SHA-256. We can add multiple lines if we prefer. We will leave these other settings to default. Next is the Diffie-Hellman groups, 
we can use different groups, use multiple groups or we can use the same group with the phase 1 proposal which is group 15. We will leave these other settings to default. We can see here the auto negotiate. We can enable this option, and the auto keep alive will also be enabled. You can hover your cursor on the information icon to view the details. This is very useful. When enabled, phase 2 negotiation will be attempted every 5 seconds until established. In other words, if the VPN goes down, this will keep on trying to connect every 5 seconds until it's connected. For some versions, you also need to manually enable the auto keep alive. We can change the key lifetime, or we can leave it to default if we want. Click OK to save the changes. We can now see the newly created Phase 2 proposal. The name which is to Taraki. The local address which is the local LAN address of this firewall, and the remote address which is the local LAN address of the remote site Taraki. Click OK again to save and apply the changes. We can now see the newly created IPsec VPN tunnel. The VPN tunnel's name which is to Taraki. This tunnel is bonded to the WAN1 interface. The status is down because there are additional configurations required and also need to configure the remote site which is Taraki. We will get back to this window later on. Now, if we check the network. Interfaces. Notice that there's a plus sign on the WAN1 or the internet facing interface. If we click on it to expand, we can see here the IPsec virtual tunnel interface which is to Taraki. This is because we bonded this VPN tunnel to this interface. If we bonded it to WAN2 then the WAN2 will have this IPsec virtual tunnel interface. This is the IPsec virtual interface logo. The next step is we'll configure the static route for this IPsec VPN. We will use a static route for this demo. You can check my other video for the dynamic routing. Go to static route. Notice that we have one entry currently added. This is the default static route. It is for this network to access the internet. We can show the distance and priority. Right click on the title bar. Tick the distance and priority to select. Tick apply to save the changes. You can see here the distance is 10 and the priority of 1. Let's now create the IPsec VPN tunnel route. Tick create new. For the destination, we have two options which are the subnet and internet service, we will choose the subnet. The destination subnet would be the remote site's local LAN address, in my case, it's the Taraki LAN network. We will add 192.168.1.0 with slash 24 subnet mask. Ignore first the gateway. We need to choose the interface where we want to access the remote site, we will add here the IPsec virtual interface, in my case, it's to Taraki. For the administrative distance, we need to set any number lower than the default static route which is 10. So for this IPsec VPN tunnel route, we can use any number between 1 to 9. Let's choose 5. Comments is optional. Make sure the status is enabled. If we expand the advanced options, we can see here the priority. Just leave it to default. Click OK to save the changes. We can now see the newly created entry. This entry means we want to access the remote site network address through the VPN virtual interface. We can see here the comment we added earlier. Keep in mind, the VPN tunnel distance should be lower than the default static route. The administrative distance role is lower comes first. So if we try to access the remote site, the traffic will pass first through this entry because it has a lower distance. If your IPsec VPN tunnel route distance is higher than the default static route then your VPN will establish but you cannot reach the remote site because the traffic will be lost on the internet. So make sure to always double check your administrative distance and configure it correctly. The next step is to configure the firewall policy. Go to policy and objects. Firewall policy. You can see here that there's a current entry. This is the NAT policy for local LAN users to access the internet. We will create a new policy. For the name, since this policy is to access the Taraki network then we can use LAN to Taraki. You can use any name you prefer. Schedule to always, means anytime. You can check my other video for the scheduling. Action should be accept if we want to allow the packets. 
deny if we want to block the packets. Incoming interface or the source interface will be the local LAN interface. We can hover our cursor over it to view or verify the details. You can see here the IP settings. For the outgoing interface, we need to choose the IPsec virtual interface, in my case, it's to Taraki. It's the same interface as what we used on the static route. Next is the source and destination address. For the source, we need to choose the local LAN network address. You can also use IP range, user, or user group if you want to specify the IP address or users you want to access the remote site. If you haven't created yet then we can directly create an address from here. Tick the plus sign to add. Under create new, choose address. For the name, we can use any name we prefer. We can use LAN or local LAN for our reference. We can also change the address color if we want. For the interface, we can choose the local LAN interface, or we can leave it to any. For the type, the default is subnet, we can change to IP range if you want to specify the range of IP address you want to access the remote site. For this demo, we will allow the whole local LAN network to access the remote site so we will enter the local LAN address. Enable the route configuration if you want to use this address on configuring the static route. Comment is optional. Click OK to save the changes. You will be asked if you want to add the new entry. Click OK to proceed. The LAN network address is now added as the source. We allow the whole network to access the remote site but again, you can change this to user or user group or even IP range if you want to restrict other local LAN users to access the remote site. You can check my other video on how to create user and user group. Next is the destination. The destination would be the local LAN address of the remote site. We will create a new address for it. We can name it as Taraki Network for our reference. We can change also the address color. Interface to any. Type to subnet. Then we need to enter the remote site's local LAN network address. We can check the Taraki firewall to verify. We will enter this address 192.168.1.0 with slash 24 subnet mask. Again, we can enable the route configuration if we want to use this address to configure the static route. Click OK to save the changes. We will be asked again if we want to add the new entry. Tick OK to proceed. The Taraki network address has been added. For the services, we can specify the services we want to use or we can use all to allow all services. Notice the address's color are green because we changed it earlier. Below are the firewall and network options. First is the NAT or network address translation. This policy is not for internet traffic or we are not going to translate the IP address to a different one so we will disable the NAT. Next are the security profiles, you can enable the security profiles you want. You can check my other video for the security profile configuration. Next is the log allowed traffic, we will choose all sessions for troubleshooting purposes. The firewall will record all the logs for this policy. If you choose security events then only the security profiles enabled will be logged. Click OK to save the changes. We can now see the newly created policy. The policy name is LAN to Taraki with policy ID of 2. This policy means that the local LAN network will access the Taraki network anytime, with no scheduling. All services are allowed and all traffic will be accepted. You can see here the NAT is disabled and also you can see the security profiles enabled. Log allowed traffic is all. The bytes are still zero because there's no traffic yet. We have successfully configured the Igorotech Firewall IPsec VPN. We will now configure the Taraki Firewall. Since I already explained the IPsec VPN step-by-step -step configuration on the Igorotech Firewall then we will just configure the Taraki network. This Taraki Firewall is using the latest 7.4 firmware which is 7.4.5 but it's not the latest because we have version 7.6 which is running on the Igorotech Firewall which we just configured. Now. Let's go to VPN. IPsec Tunnels. To configure a new IPsec VPN, tick Create New then choose IPsec Tunnel. Notice that there's a bit of difference. Version 7.4 and below almost have the same web interface as this. 
version 7.6 is the one we configured earlier which has some changes. For the name, since this tunnel is for Igorotech then we can name it as to Igorotech for our reference. For the template type, we will choose custom. Click next to proceed. We will be redirected to the custom VPN tunnel configuration. Comment is optional. First is the network settings. Choose IP version 4. For the remote gateway, since we used a static IP address on the Igorotech then I will show you how to use the dynamic DNS. We can also use the public IP address of Igorotech but I want you to know also how to use DDNS. We assume that Igorotech is using a dynamic public IP address so it will constantly change so we configured the dynamic DNS. We will change the remote gateway to dynamic DNS. Enter the domain name of the remote site. In my case it's degorotech.40ddns.com. Interface is where we are going to bind this IPsec virtual interface. It will always be the WAN interface. In my case it's the WAN1. For the NAT traversal. If we check my WAN or internet facing interface, we can see that the PPPoE is not configured on this firewall so we will leave it enabled. Leave the rest to default. Next is the authentication. Since we use pre-shared key method on the other site Igorotech then we must use also pre-shared key method. We must enter exactly the same pre-shared key or password we configured on the Igorotech site. Click on the eye icon to verify the pre-shared key or password. Next is the IKE or Internet Key Exchange. From the Igorotech, we used version 2 so we must use version 2 also from here. All of the VPN settings will be the same except for the IP addresses. Next is the phase 1 proposal, same process, we need to use exactly the same proposal with Igorotech. We can verify the VPN settings. We can see here that we used AES256 for the encryption, and for the authentication, we use SHA256, DH group of 15, and key lifetime of 86400. We only used one line so we will remove the other lines. Again, for the encryption, we used AES256, and for the authentication, we used SHA256, DH group of 15, and key lifetime of 86400. Next is the phase 2 selectors. Again, we can put any name we want. We will use to Igorotech to make it simple. For the local address. Address subnet is the default, we can use IP range, IP address, named address, etc. We will allow the whole subnet here and if we want to restrict some users, we can do it on the firewall policy instead. For this address, if we check the Igorotech phase 2 selectors. We will just reverse the local address and remote address. Again, these are the local LANs of each network. For the local address, we will enter the local LAN address of this network Taraki which is 192.168.1.0 with slash 24 subnet mask. Remote address will be the local LAN address of the remote site Igorotech which is 10.1.1.0 with slash 24 subnet mask. If we expand the plus sign, we can see here the phase 2 proposal. We need to use exactly the same proposal with Igorotech. We can see here that we used AES256 for the encryption, and for the authentication, we used SHA256, DH group of 15, and key lifetime of 43200. We only used one line so we will remove the other lines. Again, for the encryption, we used AES256, and for the authentication, we used SHA256, DH group of 15. And again, we need to enable auto keep alive and auto negotiate. A key lifetime of 43,200 seconds. Keep in mind that all the IPsec VPN settings must be identical except for the IP addresses which must be reversed. Click OK to save the changes. We can see here the newly created IPsec VPN tunnel. The tunnel's name is to Igorotech, it's bonded to the WAN1 interface. Status is red or down since the VPN is still not yet established. This tunnel reference is 1. If we go to Network, Interfaces, under WAN 1, we can see here the IPsec virtual interface. 
The next step is we'll configure the static route for this IPsec VPN. We can show the distance and priority. We can see here the default static route distance is 20. Tick Create New. The destination subnet would be the remote site's local LAN address. In my case, it's the Igorotech LAN network address which is 10.1.1.0 with slash 24 subnet mask. Ignore first the gateway. We need to choose the interface where we want to access the remote site, we will add here the IPsec virtual interface. In my case, it's to Igorotech. For the administrative distance, we need to set any number lower than the default static route which is 20. So any number between 1 to 19. We will choose 10. Comments is optional. Make sure the status is enabled. Ignore the priority. Click OK to save the changes. We can see here the newly created entry. We want to access the destination which is the Igorotech network via the IPsec virtual interface which is to Igorotech. The status is enabled. And again, always make sure the VPN static route distance is lower than the default static route. Now, if we go back again to the IPsec tunnels configuration, notice the reference is 1. Let's refresh the page. It became 2. This is because we created the static route and bonded it to this IPsec virtual interface. The next step is to configure the firewall policy. Go to Policy and Objects. Firewall Policy. You can see here that there's a current entry. This is the NAT policy, for local LAN users to access the internet. We will create a new policy. For the name, since this policy is to access the Igorotech network then we can use LAN to Igorotech. You can use any name you prefer. Incoming interface or the source interface will be the local LAN interface. We can hover our cursor over it to view or verify the details. You can see here the IP settings. For the outgoing interface, we need to choose the IPsec virtual interface, we will choose to Igorotech. It's the same interface as what we used on the static route. Next is the source and destination address. For the source, we need to choose the local LAN network address. For the destination, we will choose the Igorotech LAN network address. Schedule to always, means anytime. Services to all, for security purposes, you can specify the services if you prefer. Action should be accept. Disable the NAT. Enable the security profiles that match the services you're going to run. Always choose all sessions for the log allowed traffic. Make sure that enable the policy is enabled. Click OK to save the changes. You can see the newly created firewall policy. Now, if we go back to IPsec tunnels again. Refresh the page. The reference will become 3 because we use this IPsec virtual interface to configure the firewall policy. Now, if we go to the firewall policy, we can see here that we have the policy to access Igorotech but we don't have the reverse policy for Igorotech to access this network. We need also to configure it on this firewall. If we check the Igorotech firewall, under the firewall policy, we need also to create the reverse policy for Taraki to access this network. In layman's terms, you are welcoming the traffic. We will create a reverse policy first for Igorotech. We will give the name of Taraki to LAN to make it simple. The same configuration, we will just reverse the interface and addresses. Incoming interface or source interface will be the to Taraki, this is the IPsec virtual interface. Outgoing interface or destination interface will be the local LAN interface. Next is the addresses. For the source, we will choose the Taraki network address. For the destination, we will choose the local LAN network address. Services to all. Disable the NAT. Enable the security profiles based on your preference. Log allowed traffic should be all sessions. Click OK to save the changes. We have now the policy for this Igorotech local network to access Taraki local network and also, we allowed Taraki local network to access this local network. Next is we will configure a reverse firewall policy on Taraki firewall. Again, 
we can see here the policy for this Taraki local network to access the Igorotech local network. For the older 40 OS versions, we have the option to simply create a reverse policy. We can right-click on the firewall policy we want to create a reverse policy. Choose Create Reverse Policy. It will automatically create a reverse policy but by default, it's disabled so we need to enable it first. Right-click on it and then choose Enable. We have now the policy for Taraki Local Network to access the remote site Igorotech Local Network and also, Igorotech Local Network to access this Taraki Local Network. Let's go back to the IPsec tunnels. It should be up now. Let's refresh the page. Notice that the logo changed to green and the status changed to up. This means the communication or connection between networks has been fully established. We can also check the Igorotech network. Let's go to VPN tunnels. You can see that the VPN tunnel is also up. The VPN auto established because we enabled the auto keep alive and auto negotiate on the phase 2 proposal on each firewall. If your VPN is down then try to initiate some traffic. We can open the CLI and try to ping the remote site's local LAN gateway. We need to select the local LAN gateway as a source when we are trying to ping. At the top right, click on the CLI to launch the command line interface or CLI window. Now run the command execute ping dash option source followed by the local LAN gateway of this firewall which is 10.1.1.1. Hit enter. Next is we will ping the Taraki local LAN gateway. Execute ping 192.168.1.1. Success. This process will also try to re-establish the IPsec VPN connection once it's down for some reason. If we go back to the firewall policy, notice that we already have a byte count. This is because we ping the local LAN gateway of this firewall from the Igorotech firewall. Next is we will also try to ping the Igorotech LAN gateway from this Taraki firewall. We will also select this Taraki LAN gateway as a source which is 192.168.1.1. And we will try to ping the Igorotech LAN gateway which is 10.1.1.1. Success! We have now verified that the IPsec VPN tunnel has been fully established. Once you can ping the gateway of the remote site then the whole network should be able to access it as well. But of course, it depends on your firewall policy or the IPsec tunnel configuration. I hope by now you know how to configure the IPsec VPN tunnel on the 40 gate firewall. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.